Let's take a look at identifying linear functions. To identify linear functions, there's three different ways that we can look at it to determine if it is a linear function. And those three different ways are by looking at the graph of the function, looking at a set of points or ordered pairs, and also by looking at the equation. And a linear function, there's two things that we see here, noticing from its name, linear, notice the word right in there, line, and function. Now, to be a function, remember that a couple things we can do to determine if it's a function. One, if we graph the points or the line, to be a function, remember it has to pass the vertical line test. And the vertical line test says that if we have a vertical line, it cannot intersect the graph no any more than one time at any point. So that's uh, one thing we have to be on the lookout for. It has to be a function. And linear, a line, it has to be a straight line. So let's just dig right in here with the graph. And here, this would be an example of a linear function because it would pass the vertical line test. We could bring our vertical line across here and it's only going to intersect once. And it is a straight line. So let's see. If we had something like this, okay, um, maybe a parabola shape there, okay, well, would that be a linear function? Well, no, because it's not a straight line. It is a function because it would pass the vertical line test, but it is not linear because it's not a straight line. You might say, okay, well, I got this. What about this? What if we had a line like this? That's a vertical line, but is it a function? Okay, it is linear, but is it a function? Well, no, because right here it would fail the vertical line test. So, and that would be the line x equals 2 in this case. That is not a function because it fails the vertical line test. Okay, so it is linear, but not a function. All right, so that's graphs. Points. If we have points, in order to identify if it's a linear function, what we need to do is have a constant change in the x values and a constant change in the y value. So let's take a look at what we've got going on here. We've got from the x values, I'm going to look here, we've got 1 to 2, that would be plus 1. Okay, then from 2 to 4, I've got plus 2. From 4 to 8, I've got plus 4. From 8 to 16, I've got plus 8. Ooh, that's a problem. We do not have a constant change in the x value, so I already know that this is not going to be a linear function. I could check the y's, and if I notice there, 5 to 10, well, that would be plus 5. I'm looking at the y values now, the second coordinate. 10 to 15, we've got plus 5. 15 to 20 is plus 5, and 20 to 25 is plus 5. So the y values are constant, but the x values are not. So this is not an example of a linear function. Now, if you're not sure, if you don't remember, what you can do is you could graph those points and take a look and see what's going on there, and you would notice that it's not going to be a straight line. Okay, let's take a look at this next one here. In this one, if we look at the x values, 1 to 2 would be plus 1, 2 to 3 is plus 1, 3 to 4, plus 1, 4 to 5 is plus 1. Okay, so we're good for the x's. Now let's check the y values. Negative 5 to negative 3 would be plus 2, negative 3 to negative 1 would be plus 2, negative 1 to 1 would be plus 2, and 1 to 3 would be plus 2. So, this would be an example of a set of ordered pairs that could make up a linear function because we have a constant change in both the x and the y values. Okay, so that's how we can look at points. Then finally, let's take a look at some equations to determine if they're linear functions. Now, a couple things we can do. One, if I look at the equation and the y and the x are just to the power of 1, and they're not multiplied together, they're not in a denominator, and they are not under a square root or a radical, 
then it would be linear. So here's an example. This first one would be an example of a linear function because it has all those things. Okay, X and Y are not multiplied together. They are just to the power of 1. They're not in the denominator, not in a radical symbol. So that would be an example of a linear function. How about this one? Well, what's the problem right here? Okay, We can't have that squared term, so this would not be an example of a linear function. Let's look at this one. Whoop, right here is a problem. Okay, We can't have that square root, so this would not be an example of a linear function. This one, yeah, we got a problem right there. We can't be dividing by uh, the variable, so that would not be linear. Okay, And finally, we look at this one. Ah, there we're okay. Okay, the x and the y are both to the power of 1. There's no radicals. There's no variables in the denominator. Now, a couple other things. There can be a number in the denominator. So as an example, we could have um, x over 3 equals y. Okay, that would be linear. It's not that we can't have something in the denominator. It's that we can't have a variable in the denominator. Okay, and we cannot have x times y equals something. Okay, that would not be linear. So there's an example. Not this one would be linear, as would that one. So identifying linear functions, three different things we can look at. We can look at the graph and looking for a straight line and that it passes the vertical line test to be a function. If we're looking at points, we want to look to see that there's a constant change in both the x values and the y values. And if we're looking at equations, we can have a power that is nothing other than 1, power of 1, and we have uh, no, like a squared, we can't have that, we can't have uh, radicals, we can't have variables in the denominator, and we can't be multiplying variables by each other. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.